Bravo, Monsieur Jackman. <laughs> <laughs> Very good French. <laughs> Bravo yourself. Thank Brilliant. You. Thank you, man. Thank you. And more than that, because it's such a classic piece of literature, yeah. this is beyond anything you've ever done before. Without a doubt. I mean, the, there's the obviously the, the weight of Victor Hugo, and you're right, one of the best, most iconic characters of all time, Jean Valjean, in this incredible story. But then the musical itself became iconic, mm. Claude Michel's music. So it was an unbelievable opportunity uh, I went for. It, and yes, I was a little nervous about it, but I, I, I just figured I'm going to go for it. Mm. And, uh, and had a great time doing it. I felt like a privilege. Yeah, Victor Hugo, I think, would be quite proud of it. But I just noticed in terms of what we saw, every shot was a Rembrandt. Yeah, no. It just was astonishing. Beautifully shot. And Tom Hooper, who, by the way, wanted to give that feeling, he felt it was important for it to feel realistic, a little bit grittier than maybe... So behind all that is exactly this composition of so, it's, it's so beautifully done. Mm. Uh, he's a really fantastic filmmaker. We saw it, obviously, in the King's Speech. What a brilliant film he made there. Mm. And and then what a brave choice to follow it up with this afterwards, mm. you know. I mean, when you win the Oscar, you don't have to take on the, the riskiest kind of thing of, of all time, which is a movie musical, but that's him. That's who he is. So. And for 27 years, it's been on stage. Yeah. Most of us have seen it on stage and yeah. marvelled at uh, the interpretations given to it. But why haven't we seen a film until 2012? You know, I talked to Cameron McIntosh about that. Uh, I think there's a number of reasons. He said they did a, remember TriStar? They did a deal with TriStar 25 years ago, you know, to get it made. He said, in many ways, it's about that ensemble of the cast in, and the director, finding the director who has a vision for it. Because it's not just enough to say, OK, well, this is the most successful musical of all time. People are going to love it. Let's just film it. Mm. You have to give people a reason to love the film mm. and not just assume people who love the music are going to turn up. So mm. you need someone with the vision. And it's risky. Mm. You know, Hollywood, as we all know, is becoming quite risk averse. And this is not a cheap project. It's that old school, epic, romantic, sweeping yeah. kind of movie, well, movie. And it happens to have a musical element as well. So the, the risks are just piled on top of each other. Yeah. And it's not cheap either. Yeah. So I think all those reasons make it hard. Uh, there's plenty of reasons to turn it down, as mm. if you're the money man. Mm. And I just applaud Universal Working Title for making it. And, and thankfully, I was around at the right time. So basically, 25 years in the making, I will watch it a thousand times and when I say that I will watch the first scene a thousand times mm. it's worth just putting if you ever get the DVD of this down the track worth watching that first scene yeah. how real was it it was the dry dock scene it started yeah. from underneath the French flag yeah Astonishing. Uh, we were scene. in the real dry docks there wow. and let me tell you Chatham in England is not the warmest place on the planet particularly in February or March whenever it was <laughs> I don't think I've ever been cold in my life. And at the time, I was, he wanted me gaunt, skinny gaunt. So I, I was even on a water dehydration diet for 30 hours before. You looked really, shocking. Yeah, <laughs> I did. And uh, so I, there wasn't a lot of body fat to keep me warm in that water. I've never been cold in my life. But it was, you know, Tom Hooper, the director, just said, let's go for it. We have to tell this story. We have to give this, pla this man, we have to put him in the depths in order to raise him out. Frequently, we saw your character, Jean Valjean, physically challenged. Right mm. from the very start, that first scene I mentioned, you were physically challenged. You've done movies before, Hugh, where your physicality was so important leading up to shooting day, and you had mm. to prepare immensely for those Wolverine scenes in particular. Mm. For this, there must have been some degree of physicality involved oh, as well. A huge amount, yeah. huge amount, because he's known for his strength. In fact, Javert, years later, the inspector remembers him only because of his strength. He sees him commit an act that no one else could do, and he goes, I've only known one man who could. So he has to, you have to believe he's strong, mm. and yet still be skinny. So the, unfortunately, Chris, that body type is about as hard as there is to prepare <laughs> for. So I put on, I took off a lot of weight, started at 83 kilos, and I finished the film on 98 kilos because he becomes older and the mayor, and yeah. he, we wanted the contrast. That bit was fun, but 83 <laughs> to 98, that Pastor was fine. Please. Yeah, that was fine. It was the bit before that was difficult. So in the gym, you would do daily yeah. rounds in the gym. Yep. You really had to work out. Yeah, Tough twice. Stuff. Twice a day. Wow. Twice a day, and we were singing. It was kind of incredible. It was sort of like uh, an action movie plus fame <laughs> all at once, you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Eddie 
Redmayne, yes. who plays Maris, uh, what a professional voice. Ob- obviously, years of operating experience, obviously. You know, it's so funny you say that. The guy has the most incredible voice, and he was in choirs growing up, but has not sung in a long time. And he kept saying, oh, I don't know if I'm going to, I haven't got all the training. And we're all looking at him like, are you out of your mind? You have the most beautiful voice. He, he's an incredible actor. And I think his performance is, you know, a real standout. We love Gavroche, the little yes, boy. Yeah. And the sign at the end where Russell Crowe's character puts the pin, the special yes. police pin yeah. on his body. Yeah. A touching moment. It was a beautiful moment. And that was actually Russell's invention. I'm so glad you uh, you picked up on that. It was a, uh, I, I spoke to him this morning because I saw it last night. And we were talking. I said, Russell, I don't remember reading that bit in the script. And he goes, uh, it wasn't in the script. And he, he has an idea. And I said, one of the most memorable moments for me in the movie. And it's such a... Russell has so many brilliant qualities. He has this ability to recognise the moment in life, on stage, in film, in story, and then rip it open. Yeah. And that's what he does in that moment. And yeah. it's so memorable. You know? And on Russell... Um, it must have been incredible to work with him because there's a sense of synchronicity, almost serendipity about you two working together yeah, because yeah. he tipped you into yeah. the Wolverine. Yeah, he did. And then you're back together. You know, and we've known each other through all those years. Um, and I owe him a lot. He's been fantastic, a great supporter of mine. And we all came into this, Anne, Russell, me, all of us. I've never been on a film where there's that feeling of ensemble because all of us knew we were doing something A, that we'd never done before yeah. and that had never been done before in film, which is singing live, and that we were there for each other. And it really had that more theatre feeling of ensemble. Yeah. And you don't get that a lot in film. And, you know, I would be singing, Russell would be there, a day off, he'd be there for me, watching, yeah. you know, there for me, and vice versa. We were really there for each other and it was an incredible experience. I, 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 it was one of the highlights of my career for sure well it'll be one of the highlights of your life Anne Hathaway what yeah. what a show-stopping performance Sasha Baron Cohen yes. and Helena Bottom <laughs> Carter together were like these lovable scoundrels what brilliant. a wonderful pair together so brilliant and in a movie like Les Miserables don't you need them you know right they come in just when you need them <laughs> you've been crying your eyes out and they're like ah oh, you know and they're just so brilliant I, I I don't know how many takes I ruined because on the other side of Sasha I'd be laughing <laughs> yes. so much he never does the same thing twice. He's brilliant. And finally, um, year's end. You, you're obviously busy with other projects. Do mm. you get a chance to stay around in Australia for Christmas? Uh, no, unfortunately. We've been here for a good part of this year, which has been one of the great joys for me. I, I feel like the luckiest man alive. Um, but uh, the kids, uh, you know, enrolled at school, so they're back at school, and I'm promoting this now for the next few weeks till Christmas Day. Uh, but I will be back here for the premiere in Sydney on the 21st, which I'm very excited about. Once again, bravo, Thank Monsieur you. Jackman. Uh, it was superb. Thank you, Chris. Good on you, mate.